On the River of Nine Dragons, there is a site so ancient and so sacred that few even know of its existence. There is no way to access this site besides Riverboat, and since no one knows exactly when or why it was built, we are here to find out who built it, and if it was built by humans or something from another world. My guide informs me that the brick laying here is characteristic of the ancient Egyptians. But did the ancient Egyptians teach the builders here this technique? Or did the builders here teach the ancient Egyptians? We turn to some local shamans for more answers, and they confirm that these ancient superstructures are almost 50 years old. Okay, up to this point may have been a bit of an exaggeration since we came by road, and we do know this is a brick factory. In fact, what we see here is two generations of brick factories laid on top of each other. The beehive structures along the banks of the river are ovens for the traditional method, and interspersed throughout is the modern industrial method. There are a few reasons why this area, called Mang Tit, is ideal for producing bricks, and they all have to do with being centrally located in the Mekong Delta region. First, and most obvious, is that the sprawling rivers of the Delta make shipping heavy loads of bricks much easier. But also, since the Delta is Vietnam's rice basket, the inedible husks from the rice plants provide a cheap and abundant fuel for baking large numbers of bricks. But the most important reason is in the red waters that flow through the Mekong Delta. Silt in the water builds up on the river banks and is an almost unlimited source of clay for making bricks. As a boy, I never missed the opportunity to get my fingers into some clay, so I'd really be doing my childhood self a disservice if I didn't at least throw a few loaves of clay. Of course, the workers here don't mind if I lighten their load just a bit Both traditional and modern methods of brick making here begin the same way. Clay is dug, formed into loaves, then the loaves go into the brick making machine, which extrudes the bricks out in the right shape. Traditionally, the bricks would have been formed by hand, but this is much quicker. The difference in methods is after the bricks are dried and ready to be fired. The modern method uses an electric kiln, which is much faster for producing large numbers of bricks, but the traditional method uses the large brick ovens that are so iconic in this area. An oven here can hold up to 400,000 bricks, and the bricks are stacked in the oven in different patterns depending on the kind of brick. This ensures the bricks are evenly fired. Although the ovens can produce high quality bricks, the art is dying, since the electric kilns can produce in three days what a traditional oven can produce in three months. Though this provides cheap bricks for the consumer, it doesn't give them a product they can trust. It's easy to find many of the mass-produced bricks with flaws, and for every warped brick your eyes can spot, there are many more with structural imperfections too small to see, but not too small to damage the final construction. The brick makers here are eager to show the difference in quality, and they believe the difference is due to how long the bricks are fired in the traditional method. 
but technically speaking, the opposite should be true. The electric kilns have a greater potential for quality bricks since it is easier to control the temperature. So I believe the difference lies elsewhere. A French friend of mine once told me, Joseph, in America, you say, time is money. But in France, we say, time is love. And I believe that perfectly describes why the traditional bricks are of better quality. The brick that's made over months is imbued with the artisan's love and passion, and so is a better product. Though the craft has been passed down for years, there's no economically viable way for the next generation to continue the process, and many here believe it will die with them. I'm reminded of the tragic American folk hero John Henry, who drove steel with his hammer faster than a steam-powered machine. He won the race only for his heart to give out and to die the last of his kind, just like this generation of brickmakers. However, there is one unlikely reason why this practice could be preserved. Tourism. Besides a small stipend given to the owners to keep each structure intact, the craftsmen here hope that an influx of tourists will supplement their income enough to allow the brick making to continue. As a tourist myself, I've found the whole process fascinating. It's like looking deep into the past and connecting with our ancestors at the founding of civilization. But the giant ovens themselves have an intrinsic value I find hard to describe. Stepping inside an oven feels almost spiritual. There is a holiness here I've never experienced before. Perhaps the intense fires that have raged inside each one have purified the very air. Or maybe that the bricks draw your gaze upwards and fix your stare on the highest point of light. Whatever it is, it's a place I will not soon forget and to which I hope soon to return. <laughs>